All right. Uh, as mentioned, uh, Luis and I, uh, Docker Meetup organizers in from New York. Uh, we're here to tell you a little bit about running an open source community and what that entails. I'm going to cover, uh, we have All right, sorry, there we go. All right, uh, you want to get started with the yeah. first slide? Uh, so thank you all for being here. Uh, so these are some numbers. We run the Docker NYC meetup. Um, I can't exactly see these numbers right now. Um, but Jesse started the meetup uh, in 2013. Uh, we have over uh, 3,300 members. Um, we've hosted roughly a meetup uh, a month since initiation. Um, and then it's also three volunteers. Uh, that includes Jesse and I, so usually we will um, try to get a community member to help us out, depending on the event, um, and we'll cover that more um, in the next slides. Okay. Right, so we've got a uh, quick agenda today, uh, how to get started and how to get great. So I'm going to cover the how to get started part, um, and then Luis is going to take over the second half and tell you how to really accelerate. So the, the first part of starting a community group is really looking at the tools we have available to us. Um, and taking advantage of, of what's offered. So uh, when it comes to tooling, Meetup is the dominant platform. All of the Docker groups across the world uh, run on the Meetup platform. So uh, once you connect to Docker, um, there'll be a Meetup page set up for you, um, and you can run your group uh, from that platform. It's really good. It has an uh, easy way to display content, get comments from your members, messages. A lot of people tend to reach out to you from the group to want to speak or sponsor. Uh, so it's a really good platform. Uh, you're also gonna have something called Mobilize. I'll give you an address for that uh, and a few slides. That's gonna be an entry point uh, where you can just get involved, sign up, get involved with the Docker Slack um, and see where on GitHub the community repo is. There's gonna be labs, um, play with Docker, a lot of uh, work goes into creating these tools because a big part of the Docker ecosystem is the community. I think that's one of the number one or top five reasons this platform has been so successful. That's it, number one. Uh, so the tools on the, on the left there are really designed to make you successful with the things on, on the right. And what you're trying to do is create a local repository of knowledge in your community. Um, so you're going to look at it and kind of think about the companies in your ecosystem, the people you know, and, and decide you know, how you want to run your group. Um, so that's going to involve um, creating a code of conduct, uh, really kind of adopting the Docker code of conduct, which has kind of fair and open uh, standards for interacting with people. Um, you want to define how you work with speakers and sponsors, so some sort of uh, guidelines, and we'll touch on that a little bit as well. Uh, but you want to decide what kind of message you want your group to send. And generally, uh, what's worked well for us is um, uh, teaching and experimentation-based mindset. So you can have um, your members walking away with a new skill set at, at each meetup. Here is the address. Uh, we'll leave this up at the end of the, the presentation. But this is your entry point to any sort of involvement in the Docker community. If you want to start a meetup group or just chat on Slack, uh, this is a great place to get involved. I'll, yeah, we'll leave that up at the end as well. So we recommend, you know, with all of these groups, experiment. You're, you're, this is sort of a DevOps mindset. You're not going to know the right thing at the beginning. You'll make a lot of mistakes, but keep trying new things. Failure is, is good, so that means you're trying hard enough. So. There's a couple of, of things that I learned. Um, we were one of the first meetups that Docker had after San Francisco. You know, use your tools, right? Google Forums for adjusting speaker uh, requests. Uh, use Hangouts with your volunteer so you can communicate. Uh, make sure to use some sort of planning tool, posted notes or FlowDoc, whatever, you know, anything, something like that. And make sure to adhere to these speaker guidelines because this is a very rich ecosystem, and you want to encourage the right kind of participation. And that, again, is education, upskilling, kind of inclusivity. Uh, so 
the key to not giving up when you hit problems is to making sure that you have volunteers. And I, I could not do this meetup alone. And by alone, I mean not without Louisa or not without Docker. So don't be that guy. Run with partners. And I also wanted to call out how important diversity is. Uh, it's, a, it's important to have people involved at all parts of the stack as well as in your community. The meetup group gets really stale really quickly if you have the same people talking about the same problems. Diversity is the spice of life. I don't think I got that quite right. <laughs> Something is the spice of life, but diversity is absolutely key here. So partnering with the right set of organizations, the people inside them, uh, think about that uh, because it'll, it'll really keep a very interesting set of events going, whether or not you do things monthly, bi-monthly. Um, and like it says, make it easy to submit a talk make the barrier to entry really, really low on that. Uh, and then decide, you know, what do you want your focus to be? Do you want to be beginner, intermediate? Do you want to work on um, civic projects? Do you want to help the enterprise? Um, I don't know, something in the enterprise. Do you want to have a focus on a particular industry? Uh, think about, are you startup focused? Are you, mid, you know, figure out what that is and have a vision in the beginning and then don't be afraid to change it. So now once you get good at it, Luis is going to tell you about how you get ahead. Cool. Good. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. So I'm going to be talking about like the stuff that comes up once you've got your meetup uh, going. Uh, so one of the things that you want to do is make sure um, that you are now, basically at this point, you have a co-organizer. Um, you've hosted a few meetups. You may have a sponsor. Um, and you've kind of got the rhythm going. You're comfortable with what you're doing. Um, so now it's time to focus on growing the member base. Uh, so now it's more about uh, hosting workshops, uh, figuring out what the majority of your community looks like. Is everybody a beginner? Um, is the majority expert level? Can they then uh, run a workshop and you can then focus on bringing in new um, members? Also, uh, hosting hacking sessions. Docker does a great job. Um, with the Docker birthday party. They provide a ton of support around that. Um, and we found that it's a great time to get beginners um, involved and then also members that have been part of the community uh, for a longer time and are looking for a way to give back and educate um, new members as well. Grow your team. Um, <laughs> we've found that transparency, autonomy, and open communication are really important. Um, Jesse talked about having a um, kind of like a a base build kind of setup, right? So we all want some sort of like security and a groundwork, a framework for people to work off of. Uh, so something that we use a lot is um, like the suite of Google uh, products. We communicate through Google Hangouts. Um, we also reach out to other organizers within the Docker community. Um, and that can be, you know, team in Brazil, the team um, in London. Uh, it's just like across the board. Uh, different people that kind of help us with any issues that we face, and then we try to give back to them as well. Um, so just being transparent about where you're, like, what you're strong at, and then also realizing where you need help in is really important, because you don't want to bring in a volunteer and say, like, well, you can do whatever you want. That's not helpful for anyone. Um, they will get confused. You will get frustrated. Um, and things will start to kind of uh, fall apart from there. Uh, so you want to be very specific about the type of help that you need. Um, and then be very conscientious about everybody's time uh, because you are all volunteers. Um, and so and you need to understand that there is like that time constraint. Uh, let's see, involve the community. So partners are a huge, huge thing for us. Um, anytime that we want to host a meetup, um, if we don't have a partner, we will reach out to Docker Inc. and they will help us find a partner. Um, and the partner funds typically tend to go um, either for covering um, the cost of the space, um, which you actually ideally, in an ideal world, you want to have the space uh, sponsored. Um, so for Docker NYC, um, Cisco is actually our uh, space sponsor for most of our events. Um, and since we've had them supporting us, it has just made like, our job so much easier because we don't have to worry about finding a location. Um, and when you have 150 people showing up for your monthly events, um, there are only so many spaces that will, ho that will like, have enough space for that amount of people. Um, sponsors also help uh, provide food and drink, um, which is really important. Uh, and don't worry, you don't have to provide alcohol. Uh, <laughs> it's a nice perk. 
uh, but everything uh, kind of comes as you grow your funding as well. Um, let's see, oh, and then also look within your community for when you're looking for volunteers. Um, oftentimes, if we run into an issue, we will reach out to our community and there's always somebody that's available and willing to help. Um, the community for us has been huge. Uh, space, oh right, so getting sponsored, I just covered this. Uh, fast car and first coat, uh, fur coats, we're not there yet, but we're hoping real soon. Uh, <laughs> and this is how you sign up for, um, to get involved with the Docker community. Um, it's a really simple step, basically what will happen uh, is you fill out this form, um, either Lisa or Karen uh, from Docker Inc. will get in contact with you and they will help you set everything up. Um, initially you'll be uh, logged into like Mobilizer, Slack, um, a few other tools. Um, you'll also have access to, to us um, to be able to ask us questions. And DockerCon, uh, at the end of the week, there's always a organizer summit. Um, and so we will actually be doing another version of this talk with more specifics for uh, growing um, and tackling the issues that come along once your meetup has kind of uh, grown a bit more. Um, so if any of you are organizers, uh, please come back. It won't be the same. Um, we're not gonna be covering the same stuff. Uh, so I think, now what? Do we have time for a Q&A? Yeah, uh, I think uh, we wanted to leave some part of this open, a little shorter than the average talk, because this is kind of about asking questions on how to run these events. Uh, I can, we can walk through some of the, the web pages and the resources we have, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's important to stress um, this, this, this kind of meetup structure is part of Solomon and Docker's vision, so uh, this is one of the most valuable things I've done in, 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 in terms of being able to grow as, a, as an engineer and as a participant in my community. Uh, it's really connected me to New York and I encourage you either to start your own group or get involved in a group if you can as a member, um, a volunteer, a, a sponsor, a speaker. Uh, it's literally the, the, the best thing you can do, in my opinion, in terms of leveling up your understanding and your interactions with other people and understanding how to problem solve. So, uh, yeah, does it, if we can, ask, we can uh, answer any questions you have now, um, and I'm happy to show you also some of the sign-up process. Yeah, go ahead. Ooh, it's hard to hear. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah, how do you promote was the question. Uh, yes. Do you want to start that off, and I'll answer anything you, you missed? Yeah. Um, so... The main way that we promote the event is actually through meetup.com. Um, we've also set up a Twitter handle. Um, we also look for other organizations. So something that um, I'm passionate about is also like inclusivity and diversity within the meetup um, and at work, just across the board. Um, so anytime that we will host an event that I feel is more like beginner friendly or we need a certain, like we want more speakers or anything like that, just kind of across the stack as well. Um, there are certain groups that I'll reach out to on meetup.com. Um, so for me, I'll usually kind of like the first ones that I'll reach out to are Women Who Go, um, Women Who Code as well, um, Code Newbies is a great um, uh, ecosystem as well. Um, and then Jesse has like other um, organizations that he'll reach out to. Um, also just reaching out to like the developers that you already know, people within your own uh, community is really great. Um, and then we both have our own Twitter handles, so we'll usually post there as well. Um, something that we've found really helpful is actually during the meetup, um, having someone who's dedicated to um, managing social media. So someone who's taking photos, someone who's thanking the sponsors, someone who's take, uh, thanking the speakers. Um, that's always a really great way to keep everybody involved and anybody who can't make that meetup still feels like they're a part of it. Um, and so they'll come back um, and either speak or sponsor or get involved somehow in a future meetup as well. Anything? Yeah, great, great answer. The only thing I'd add to that would be that we, we cross-promote with other meetups mm -hmm. when someone's getting started or they want um, higher attendance. You know, we've got 3,400 members, so if someone's talking about using Docker and Azure downtown and they've only got a you know 20 RSVPs, we'll blast that event out to our, our mailing list and you know give them a, you know 10, 20, 30 more uh, members. So that's key is that, you know, social media promotion and then taking advantage of your, your fellow organizers and the meetup community. Uh, they're always... I don't think I've ever been turned down when I've asked for help, so yeah. maybe I should ask for more help. Or uh, Any other questions? No? Sure. Any other meetup organizers here today? Oh, All right. Uh, nice. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead.
The question is, how do we encourage our membership to be speakers? I, that's a fantastic mm -hmm. question. That's, I think that is actually my day job as a meetup organizer. Uh, do you want to take that or should? No, you can go ahead. Okay. I'll add to it. Yeah, I think what that, I mean, that's sort of the prime directive in a way of our group um, is to encourage people to share the engineering work that they're doing. Unfortunately, you have to speak in front of people to do that. But the, that's just a side effect of our goal, which is to showcase cool technology products to groups of engineers, operators, you know, business folks. Um, so how do we do that, right? Um, it's, it's oftentimes it's sitting with folks, getting them started on the presentation, showing them, like, here's an outline, here's how you run a demo. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's significant emailing back and forth to say, how do you hone your message? Uh, and also making sure that at every single event you're saying, you know, we want you guys to, you know, someone here to speak. Next event, come talk to us. Mm -hmm. We're also, you know, we're both very nice. It's kind of an active recruitment in the beginning, middle, and end of every event. And then making ourselves available to cultivate the speakers if they need help and to guide them on what good demo practice is, how to do mirror displays as opposed to extended because you can't turn around and talk and hit the mic at the same time. So it's providing the, the practice, the guidance, constant, constant reinforcement. <laughs> it takes a lot of encouragement, but it's, it's uh, I think it's rewarding. And then it's uh, staying connected to it's a GitHub also, um, looking at what people are doing, um, seeing what, what, what projects are popular and proactively reaching out to them and seeing if they want to come participate. So there's a fair amount of outreach as well. Um, something else that we did was uh, create, uh, I think it's a Google form that we have, yeah. A Google form we created, um, there's, um, there's like a field, but anyways, you pick whether you want to be a sponsor or a speaker. Um, so it's really lightweight, and then we ask like, if you want help um, actually preparing the talk or practicing through your talk, um, so then one of us will help you do that. Um, another one is uh, something that we saw that did, we didn't really think that it would have such a big impact, but it was actually just having a PowerPoint um, at the start um, that we use uh, to introduce ourselves um, and then also introduce the meetups to everyone. Um, and also asking at the beginning, like, who, who's been here before? Um, who's a first time attendee? Um, it's like a, a great way to like, break the ice. Um, the uh, slide deck itself has helped us because then people can match us to like, our name. Um, and I think it just makes it easier for us to become more approachable at some, like there's something that happens there. Um, and then also the uh, Google form has been really helpful. Um, so sometimes we will have like a backlog of people who've been interested in speaking, and then we can just reach out to them. Um, so always like, yeah, different like touch points, um, making sure that you remain accessible, um, that you tell people that you um, want to have first time speakers as well. Um, just kind of saying that aloud um, helps people become like more receptive uh, to what you're putting out there. Um, so yeah, different touch points, making it easier for people to reach out to you. Yes. How much time do we put in? Ah, great question. <laughs> uh, I feel that's fully dependent on the type of event. Um, so we have signature events like uh, Global Mentor Week, uh, the Docker Birthday. Uh, those events always take more time um, day to day. Um, and so usually what we try to do is uh, pull in more volunteers um, to help mitigate that. Uh, day to day, I'd say, on a, a regular week, I think I, prob I could probably put in like 30 minutes or uh, 10 hours. Um, it's really just, but do not be discouraged. Because if you just volunteer and you're not a, like, you have other people helping yeah. you out, that drops drastically. So that's why we promote like you need other people on your team um, and people that are dependable um, and that you know like, if something comes up at work, you can count on them to kind of click up the slack. Um, it's huge, 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 huge. Yeah, I think it, it probably costs a full work day to plan an event, let's say. So eight hours. And you have a month to plan an event. So over the course of a month, you'll spend a full nine to five clock, wall clock, planning it. But that's between your organizers, your space sponsors, your speakers. And, and frankly, if you're not learning, about new technology during the process, making new connections, then you're sort of doing it wrong anyway. So I look at that time invested as benefiting me. I'm learning about Docker's technology, 
spending time with Luisa, you know, getting to understand how things are working. So it, it's absolutely a, a chunk of work, but it's a, I, I get a lot out of it. Yeah, personally for me, like joining the Docker meetup has been huge because I'm mainly a front end developer. Uh, and so, and my, I work at an agency and our main focus is front end development. Uh, so I learn a lot by speaking with Jesse, uh, looking at the demos at the meetups, um, doing stuff on the side. Uh, so for me, it's like a huge, huge learning opportunity. And if I were just attending the meetup, I, I wouldn't know like half of what I know now because uh, I just wouldn't be exposed to it. Uh, so huge thing is like you don't know what you don't know. Uh, put yourself in a position where you're exposed to that uh, and you will learn and grow so much. Uh, so for me, it's been huge just like professionally um, and then also just being part of the tech ecosystem um, is also um, huge help. Cool. Any last questions? No. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you, Louisa, by the way. I did, thank you in a public forum for being the most awesome co-organizer around. Uh, Couldn't thanks, do without Jesse. you, so thank you. You too. Publicly <laughs> recognize Louisa with a round of applause here. She's awesome. Thank you. Thank you.